So I was asking about oh, good applications for a bone knife, mm -hmm. and he was explaining that it's it's like perfect for getting the sinew off the the back of the. Of oh, the that's cool. Yeah. It's like the ideal tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's sweet. Mm -hmm. It like fits in between. Just yeah, I just slide it in and then uh, take take the meat off because it won't cut the meat. It'll just like uh, plow the meat off, and it cleans the sinew. Oh, cool. And it's, and that sounds great. It's the best tool. And, and, scra and scraping dog bands is a great thing mm. to scrape dog bands. Oh, all right, you mentioned, you mentioned that. Yeah. And the stones are the uh, weights. Yeah, yeah. And there, there's a bobber. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's fabulous. We're looking for the fish hook. This, this is it. Is it. Yeah. Welcome, Um, My name is Tim Swanson. Um, I carve like tons of fishing hand. I don't know why, but I like became known for it. I wrote an article. Uh, on how to carve them in, for Backwoodsman Magazine. But now I have like dudes in like Scotland tagging me on Instagram when they make one and like asking me permission if they can sell them. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, go, I don't care. So I don't know why, but like it's like a weird thing that uh, became is the fish shaped fishing hand line. Um, so these are some finished examples. Uh, this is one of my, my personal ones I've had for years. Uh, and that's a really beautiful spalted maple that I found on accident. You guys can hand that around. And then these are two kind of more like primitive style fishing hand lines. So um, it's dog bane. I waxed it with beeswax to protect that fiber a little bit. And then there's two different examples of natural bone hooks that you can make. One's a gorge where the fish swallows it and it like turns perpendicular and gets stuck in its throat. The other one's just a traditional hook. There's a, a little stone weight and a uh, muscle shell lure that I made ground down. So you guys can pass that around. Take a peek at that. And then there's a couple other examples up there. Um, does everybody have a knife? Okay. A sharp knife? All right. So, um, why don't... There's a no over here. Is there a no? Is it a dull knife? Okay. Um, or whatever, we can figure it out. You can use my knife sharpener. I have a personal sharpener in my bag that I'll let you use. That's fine. So, uh, cool. So why don't we go around, uh, real quick. Who are you? And what is your interest in fishing and or this class? Actually cast from the reel. Um, but I like the fish shaped fishing hand line. So that's just because it's cool, right? It's one thing to make something that works. It's one thing to make something that looks cool. So, you, you know, you wear your fish t-shirt. You got your fish shape. You know, you, I don't even know. Your Bass Pro Shops hat. You're ready to go. You got it fishing everything. So um, pretty much what we're going to do is like the first half of class is a three-hour class, right? So I hope that we can finish them by you know maybe two hours and then we can go hang out at the river and fish you guys would have to find a worm or some sort of bait or whatever or whatever a piece of hot dog or something um so that's that um hand lines are awesome the benefit is how small they are right because i can go and catch a trophy bass with this thing as opposed to all the whole setup right um uh the downfall of these is if you are prone to emotional breakdowns, you'll probably have many of them while using these. Because if there's any grass or stick or anything on the shore, you're going to get tangled on it. Even like the little hooks on your shoes uh, that you put your shoelaces on or if you're fishing a canoe and there's some stuff in the canoe. Because we're going to let the line out and kind of stack it on itself, spin it around and cast it. And we'll show it because I was scoping yesterday. There's a wicked good spot right here. If not, that's less accessible, but there's a very accessible spot down there that looks pretty good. And maybe if we can get down there, um, I've been fly fishing for over 20 years, so I know how to read water and where exactly the fish are. So if you guys are open to that, I'll talk about that as well if you want. Yeah. Um, just to see, like, okay, like, all right, where are you going to cast, right? We're going to get the most um, chance to catch a fish. So um, I don't even know. I assume there would be trout in here. Um, so we'll, we'll work with that and see what happens. So. Um, Great, so just to give you guys a little tour, um, the leather, that's my little store there. I don't have a materials deposit, but if you wanna buy something, please, I'd appreciate it. But um, on the white mat, this is all kind of the gear that we're gonna use. Um, you guys are gonna use red, see, look how beautiful this wood is. All right, so you guys are gonna make some cool, I saved it for the, cause I, you guys are, this was a special class at the gathering. So I wanted to uh, give you guys some good stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna split this up. I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, which I split it, I cut this tree down, it was a dead tree, but um, it's cracking nicely, which is good, so we can work with that. And then we're gonna use monofilament, all right? It's probably six pound, 
eight pound. Usually I just get six or eight. I think it's all six. This is 10 pound actually. That's probably enough for one person, but I'd love it if we can use this up in class. And then I got this big spool. Um, so we can, we can work with that after. Uh, this is 14 pound test. So uh, six pound is really the magic number. Uh, in my mind, I've caught like giant bass with six pound and I've caught fish this big with six pound. Um, the way I do my hand lines um, is I'll tie, well, I do all different things, but I like to tie braided line around it. And braided line doesn't stretch, um, but it does tangle a little bit less. And then I attach a little barrel swivel to the end of the braided line. And then I attach a little monofilament leader about that long, just so it's harder for the fish to see. And if it gets stuck, it'll break. Braided line, usually it won't, it's very hard to get it to break. So you usually have to cut it or whatever. Um, you could, if you do it right, you could break it at the lure. That's where you want it to break. So that's why I actually do a monofilament leader because it happens, things get stuck in rocks and that's just, you're, go, you're going to litter when you fish. That's just the way it is. You're gonna get your lure stuck in a tree, in a rock, and we just have to, that's why I like to use natural lure, even if it's metal, like non-lead metal or whatever. Uh, hooks will rust away, things like that. Um, it's just the way it is, but I, I want it to break at the hook. All right, so I can still have that line. I can quickly tie another lure on. Um, as I'm crying because I lost my favorite lure there and you know whatever so then I have this here um, it's up to you what you want to take but I have three different well, I guess I have four different types of hooks but I don't recommend using treble hooks you know the three hooks um, with hand lines because then it's harder to store what I use actually is a barbless carp hook I am all about the barbless hooks because if you get it stuck in your skin you just have to take it out instead of doing the whole thing where you poke it through the other side, cut it off, bring it back through, right? Uh, so I'm all about the barbless hooks. And if you're catch and release fishing, you don't even have to take the fish out of the water. You can just slip the hook right out of its mouth. It's awesome. Anytime I fish with treble hooks, I pinch my barbs, all right? If you don't know how to catch a fish with a, barbed, uh, with a barbless hook, you don't know how to fish. So that's what I always say. So barbless is great. But if you do want to kind of do more of a survival survival style I would I would throw barbs on that right away because no matter what if I catch a fish I'm eating it right if I'm in a if I need a survival kit so I do have size 8 uh, bait holder hooks and then I also have size 8 I think they're called Aberdeen hooks Aberdeen hooks if anybody knows the correct pronunciation on that that's these little gold hooks these are really good for um, you know like trout fishing with worms or whatever fish always swallow these you know so this is actually a good good survival kit hook as well all right the barbless hooks, uh, the carp hooks, they usually just catch the lip. I've never had a fish swallow these, all right? So that's that. Um, if you go in here, please don't knock it over, all right? Because then we're going to have hooks all over the place, all right? So we'll, we'll be careful with that, but that's more at the end of class. Um, so line, wood. I do have some uh, bare fat salve that we're going to rub into our hand lines after if you want to oil them up after you sand them, all right? So that's that. Uh, this is all sandpaper of various grits and newness. There's some used stuff. There's some coarse stuff. Um, but the goal is to not need sandpaper with your carving, but we are going to need it the way that we're going to carve these, okay? And then here's the saws. If you guys haven't used these saws, just so we're all on the same page, they lock close. You just have to press and open them up. I only have six of them, so we're going to have to share, okay? Um, so that's that. So to get into fishing hand lines... Um, if everyone's good, if I just lecture for like 10 minutes and then we'll have you guys pretty much just be hands on the rest of class. When you're going to look for wood, um, you know what, actually let's do this. Let's split, let's split it up. Can somebody find me like a big hardwood stick that's not rotten? Even like a piece of firewood if there's one somewhere. We'll, uh, we'll start to baton some wood. Okay. So, as a mallet or? Yeah, like a mallet to smack the back yep. of this knife. Yep. Nice. Just like a like a piece of firewood or something. Where are they putting? Is, are they, what are they burning over there? Are they burning what is that? Firewood. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's that firewood. Thank you. So, um, what I like to do is make little boards. All right. Those ones that I make and I, I sell like custom quality ones. I just buy like milled wood. I get like really nice exotic woods and stuff. Um, 
So that's pretty much what we're going after, all right? It's ideal that you don't have any cracks and the sapwood on this appears to be a little bit more rotten than the heartwood. So that's up to you if you want to whittle that off and just have purple or if you want that nice artistic, you know, di two different colors. I think that looks really nice to have that. So yeah, bring that over just in case this, um, yeah, because that might be a little bit heavier. So just to sh uh, show what we're going to do, I, I look for any cracks and I line them up on the cracks and I don't, I don't care if this goes into the soil, um, this knife, so we can just don't have it going to any rocks. We might use that. Uh, yeah, I think so. Log. <laughs> thank you. Yep. So, you know, there's some knots in this. Red cedar knots are pretty easy to work with. Um, I think we, we should definitely have enough for everybody, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten these down. And I'll have you guys do this, too. I want you guys to get some, yeah, there we go. Look at that. Get some hands-on. Stuff like this, this is all scraps. Put off, unless, you know, maybe at the end we can figure out something to do with this. But put this just off to the side in a pile because we can definitely use that for something else. Um, so, yeah, so just split it up, make some boards. All right. Um, if they're like, you know, that one kind of split a little thin, that would still work. That's fine. All right. So, but I like them when they're like, I don't know. I don't know, whatever, thick. Quarter inch or something half inch all right so that's all these boards there okay uh just when you get one just look on the ends and just remember that if there's a crack get it out now or work with it now so that you don't carve your fish and then you're like oh there's a crack and then your whole fish snaps in half all right um so that's that right so just split that up i'll let you guys go ahead and do that just be careful with the, the big chopper knife here um you know we always want to be careful Cool. I don't know these pieces of wood are calling to me. I don't know. I'm a big fan of like if you're gonna work with something, it should like whisper your name and carve me, Tim. You know. So, all right. Just to talk about knife safety, I know we're all, we all come from various um, experience levels, so I, I like to just give my safety that I teach in my class, just so we're all on the same page. All right. So uh, when you guys carve, just I have three rules. Look at what you're doing. The knife should be in your hand or in the sheath right i'm breaking my rule right now um and always carve away from yourself and others all right if you're new to knives sit on your butt cross your legs put your elbows on your knees then it is impossible for you to cut any part of your body except for your non-dominant hand right because if i wasn't paying attention i'm cutting towards myself but if i have my elbows on my knees i can't cut my leg right unless i'm doing something really weird but if i'm back here see what i'm saying so that's just something that you could do or whatever if everyone has different uh experience levels so what we're gonna do is just go ahead and carve down and I always like to just see what I have to work with when I make these I'm gonna make a long skinny one um, and I like to smooth it all out because that way it's it's easier to smooth it out now than after you carve the, the fish shape okay and then we can you don't want to need sandpaper all right you want to carve it smooth all right work with it that way And we're going to have various fish shapes, you know, throughout class. Sometimes they look a little interesting, so they're fun to see what everyone makes. At the end, I'd love to have everyone put them out. We'll get a picture of them. Mm. So that's that, all right? So that's just like a nice smooth board. It's a little rough, but we're going to work with it. Okay, a little rough spots, but nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. Smells delicious. So then what we're going to do is this is a very unsafe way to use a saw, but as long as we're paying attention, no one's going to get cut. It's just th the best way to do this is to like clamp it in a vise and all that, but we're out in the woods, right? So um, there's two ways that you can carve the Vs, and that's always what you should carve first instead of doing the fish shape, so then you know what you have. So what I do is I elevate this off the ground. To the side of it, and that's going to be a good spot where some trout would hang out. Right on the edge of the current around structure, that's a great spot. A bad, or even like right in this, because this is a little channel right here. I wouldn't fish it from this side, though. I'd try to fish it from this side. Fish can see. I jumped in here. There's a bunch of us, right? When I go to fish, usually what I'll do, especially if I'm going to come up on a river, um, I'll like go in. I'll like stalk up to the spot, nice and quiet. Because you can see it. If you can see the fish, you get close, they'll scatter. All right? You can see it. So I'll, And I'll sit. I'll just sit and watch. What's five minutes, you know, out of your day to just watch? 
Are there any fish rising? Do you see any ripples? What's going on, right? And maybe it'll open up your mind to something else. Be like, oh, I, I was gonna fish this spot, but I see all the fish hanging out right here, so I'm gonna just whip the lure up there and let it float down to them. A terrible spot would be over there, because there's like no water right there, right? Or even like that whole column, unless there's a little deep channel. So that, I wouldn't even bother fishing over there if it's shallow. All right, especially trout, they like, um, did somebody build that up, or is that just from a tree falling? Let's see this. From a tree. That's interesting. So, when we fish, I'm like standing like way here. It's all, oh, that's all like, it's all slimy. So, uh, there's some hand lines that you can make where you can just cast it from the reel. I just don't like those for whatever reason. So, with the hand lines, and they can be frustrating sometimes. So, if you're like up on the bank, it's going to get caught and all you know what I mean so you get caught all that so what I like to do is I'll start short and just kind of get the line out there all right you see how that lure bounced back you never want that because that's going to create a bigger splash let a little more line out and then in water you can just let it kind of sit with the spin and throw it all right see how it bounced back so this is just getting the line ready Okay, this is just when you first start. And then since I have this spoon, I'm just gonna strip it in. If you have worms, you just throw it in and let it sit. Or you can even let the worm um, sink down to the river. All right, so I want this thing to land. And the cool thing about hand lines is you set the length. So if I get this right, I can cast right at that, that smaller branch that's closest to me, and I'll never catch on it because a reel, you let out a, a, a random amount of line, but the hand lines, no more lines coming off this thing, all right? That's cool. Yeah. So that's the benefit of hand lines, is you can set, as long as you have good aim, you can set that. So maybe I'll give it a little bit more and then I'm gonna call it good, but I wanna fish right there. I like that spot. You're just letting the line trail in the water. Yep. Going there, it's pretty fast, and sometimes when it's shallow, it's still going fast, so if it, you can't really see down, you kind of have to look at stuff, right? If there's like white caps, usually it's pretty shallow there, all right? If you have big boulders and stuff like that, you always want to cast downstream of them, because that's where fish are going to hold up, all right? So, no, downstream of the, of the rocks. Because the current is going right up against that rock, and then it's spreading out, and then you have a little pocket behind that rock, all right? So like when I fly fish, or, you know, whoever got that 10 car rod yesterday from me, you just whip it right in, let it sit and then let it float downstream and sometimes you'll cast it right when you get it in, the fish will go after it because it's like a, whatever, a worm or something or fly fish are using like little aquatic nymphs and stuff. Um, it'll go right after it or you can actually pull them out of a hole with your fly. Looking in there though, I don't like that. And tell, somebody tell me why. Oh, if you get caught. To get caught on these big, these, those almost look intentionally placed. Right? Right, it wasn't the heel leader. Yeah, so those, I, I'm going to get caught on those, but if you can't see it, right? But if you look behind it, it almost doesn't even look like the current stops behind that boulder, right? Like it looks like it just keeps, the boulder's doing nothing. Is that, you guys see that? Yeah. Okay. But let's, let's, see it goes like yeah, around. let's go up here and I'm going to show you a classic place that would be a really good spot to cast a lure. If you guys do walk in here, it's very uh, <laughs> slippery, so just be careful. This is probably easier to go. Woo. I think behind that. All right, so this spot. Oh yeah. All right. <laughs> I really want, if you guys can, if, if you can at least hear me, uh, this spot's great, all right? Here's the deal. You got the white caps up there, right? Like the, the strong current, okay? Fish like to kind of hang out in the, around those areas, but not necessarily in those areas. So right there? So if you cast upstream, I've caught tons of fish right above those for whatever reason. But usually downstream is where it, where the action happens, all right? If you have white caps with an area that opens up, all right? However, this has another thing going for it. Somebody tell me. All uh, right, inflow? There's another stream coming in. 
All right, that means more nutrients, more bugs, more something. Fish love when things join together. All right, so this spot right here should be a good spot. All right, maybe there's just no fish, who knows, right? So let's see, let's cast there. And in this situation, I just stand right here, right? So uh, when I'm in a spot where my line's not gonna get taken out, I just stack it up. Don't grab that, because if I pull that, that thing's going right in your finger, all right? And guess what? Then you're gonna turn into a fish. All right, and when someone's fishing, it's a good idea not to stand right behind them because they got a cast. And you have eyeballs. <laughs> so right in there, you know, you could try to pull a fish out. Uh, I want to cast right behind it, but who knows? I don't know. What? Yeah, you have to go find a worm or something. Why don't I have bait?